Number four, what is the IUPAC name for the following compound? So now we have a cyclohexene derivative. So we have a double bond inside the cyclohexane ring, which makes it cyclohexene. And now it's not arbitrary the way we number. We need for the two carbons participating in the double bond to be carbons one and two. But there are two options possible. We could either have this be number one and this be number two, or we could have this be number one and this be number two. And we need to choose the option that will give any substituents on the molecule occurring soonest. What we end up realizing is that we have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. There's a few common errors here. Some will try to label the carbon with the chlorine as number one. That doesn't work. Again, it's cyclohexene, which means the carbons participating in the double bond needs to be carbons one and two. Some people would take this carbon here and make that number one and try to make the carbon with the chlorine number two. That also doesn't work because again, it's not just that any carbon in the double bond can be carbon one and then you go any way you want. It has to be both of the carbons in the double bond are carbons one and two. So there's only two options. It's this or the other one we showed. We choose this one because that gives the chlorine on carbon three. So now we know we have three chloro and then we don't actually have to list the location of the double bond. That is implied. We know that the double bond will be on carbons one and two by convention. So we look over here and we see that we have three chloro cyclohexene as option B and that's gonna be the answer.